6.1 now, uh, chapter 6, uh, we're dealing with polynomials and polynomial functions. Um, this is using properties of exponents, so it's the first time we're taking gander here at uh, exponents. Um, so we have properties of exponents that we need to go over to make sure that you guys actually understand what's going on. And the first property that we have is the product of power property. What this is basically saying is if you have the same base of A and you have exponents that are the same, all you're going to do is add them together. Okay, that's all that you're going to do here. So what I'm saying is if I have 2 to the 3rd and I have 2 to the 5th, all that I'm basically going to do here is add the exponents together to end up getting 2 to the 8th power. Okay, so when the bases are the same and you're just multiplying two of them together, you're actually adding the exponents. The power of a power, and the trick here is when you see parentheses, right, the parentheses meaning a power of a power, when you see that there, that's actually multiplication. So with those parentheses, that actually stands for multiplication. So what that means is, is if I have uh, 2 uh, to the 3rd to the 5th, that's really taking 3 times 5, which is multiplying, so it's 2 to the 15th power as your answer. So continuing with the powers, uh, the properties of exponents, we have the power of product. And what that means is if I have an m here, I can take that through to both items. And the reason I can is there are actually exponents here. This is like saying a to the first power and b to the first power. So I'm actually doing the rule that I just talked about. I'm taking 1 times m and getting m, and 1 times n here and getting m. So really, I have a to the m, b to the n. I'm multiplying it through to each item inside the parentheses. So an example of that is, even though this is a 2, all right, I still have to take this 3 through to both items. So I get 2 cubed because 1 times 3 is 3. And here's a 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So I actually end up with 2 cubed x cubed. And 2 cubed, we actually know what that is. 2 cubed is 8. So I have 8x cubed. Uh, next is the negative exponent property. And basically what that is saying is, is that you can have a negative exponent. We're not allowed. So if you have a negative exponent, you want to move it respectively. So what that means is, is if I have a negative exponent, which I do, right? if I have a negative exponent um, on the numerator, I'm going to move it to the denominator. That's why it's 1 over a to the m. What I also want you to keep in mind is if I have a negative exponent on the denominator, I would move that to the numerator. So I want to make sure you keep that in mind. So I have 2 to the negative 3. What that means is I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over 2 to the third, and 2 to the third is 8. Remember, no negative exponents. Um, the zero exponent property is basically stating that anything to the zero power is going to be 1. doesn't matter what it is. Dog to the zero, a to the zero, 4 to the zero, doesn't matter whatever it is, it's going to give you 1 as your answer. So 2 to the zero is 1. The quotient of powers property, um, before when we had multiplication, you added them, right? a to the m times a to the n, you did a, uh, you did m plus n, we added them. Well, with division, instead of adding the answers, we are going to subtract them, right? It's just going to be m minus m. So with this problem, 2 to the 6 and 2 to the 4th, all you're going to do is take 6 minus the 4, and you end up with 2 and 2 squared is 4. That's basically all that's saying. We have the power of quotient property. And basically what that's saying is if you have a fraction on the inside of the parentheses, you can look at this as a to the first power and b to the first power. So I can take that m through to both items. So I'd end up with a to the m, b to the m. So if I had 2 thirds to the 4th, it would be 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 4th. And 2 to the 4th is 16, and 3 to the 4th is 81. So with all those properties in line and in check here, let's take a look at example 1. All you have to do is, because there is parentheses there, I can tell you right off the bat that I know that I'm going to have to multiply those exponents. So 3 times 4 is 12, so I get 2 to the 12th power, which is 4,096. Next up, um, because I have parentheses, it's still the same like up here. We multiply. Well, this is like saying 3 to the first power. It's like saying 4 to the first power. So 2 times 1 is 2, so I'll get 3 squared. And that's a 1 down here, so I'll be 4 squared, because you're just multiplying. 1 times 2 is 2. 
1 times 2 is 2, and 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. Even though there's parentheses here, the parentheses are just holding in the negative. So it's a negative 5 and a negative 5. Since I have a negative 5 and a negative 5 side by side, all I have to do is add the exponents. So negative 6 plus 4 is what we're doing here. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And since we can't have negative exponents, that means I actually have 1 over negative 5 squared. And 1 over negative 5 squared is uh, negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25. So the answer is actually 1 over 25. And when we come back here, we will continue on with 6.1 um, with properties of exponents.